it might not surprise you to learn that not only do I own a slightly worn Nintendo Switch, but also a faintly grubby mouse and keyboard. That's YouTube money, eh? But you might not know that all three of these things can work together in perfect harmony. Sometimes there are apparently a few, not loads, but a few Switch games with native keyboard and mouse support. No hacking, no homebrew, all you need to do is plug into the USB slots on the dock. So where does this get us? What can we play? Well, first up, let's take a look at Doom. A perfectly respectable port of the original by Bethesda. It even supports some mods. It plays fine with the standard controllers. Does it work old school style? Um, no, it doesn't. The keyboard works, but no mouse, which is a bit of a problem. I tried every type of troubleshooting I could think of. There's no option in the settings. I tried other mice and, well, it's just not working. Back to the controller for this one. It's not set up for keyboard only, by the way. Really old school DOS style. There's no way to fire. Half the essential functions are missing. It's not the actual original Doom 1993 keyboard layout, which you could play just on keys. It's broken. You can have one hand on the keyboard and one on a Joy-Con. That might raise some eyebrows at your LAN party, but I can't see that there's a massive benefit to playing that way. I was beginning to suspect that there might be something wrong with my Switch or my dock, at least, but thankfully though, Quake eased my mind. Another port by Bethesda, another good one, and this time keyboard and mouse support isn't just a mirage. In fact, it works really well and feels like a bit of an upgrade, actually. And yes, games that require precise aiming always seem to work better with a mouse, don't they? Unless it's really tuned for something else. That's not a particularly controversial point, I'm sure. Old school PC game Quake was definitely made with this sort of input in mind. It's not unplayable with a controller, but it does seem to work noticeably better this way. Why Doom doesn't function, I don't really know. A few Reddit posts I've found do mention at the same problem, so it's not just me, but Quake hits the spot. It's been a while since I played this game properly. I think the last version I played was on the Saturn. It is a bit smoother on the Switch, and unless you're into serious modding, this makes a good showing here. And it is portable and it's cheap. The multiplayer seems to be okay as well too. But hey, the Switch is a diverse platform. Ancient boomer shooters is, well, there's more to it than that. What else can we try? Well, for a totally different type of game in every possible way, how about Hypnospace Outlaw? An offbeat indie title that sounds really like something a reviewer would say, doesn't it? An offbeat indie title that hits all the right notes. That'll be the subheading in my Guardian review. Thankfully, there is a free demo of this so I can determine if mouse and keyboard is actually supported and not just a rumour before I lay out any money. And well, yes, it very much is. And also, like Quake, it is a definite improvement, but for totally different reasons. This is a sort of old school internet simulator where you play as a moderator on a retro future 90s nostalgia internet thing that people log into through their dreams. Yeah, it is dangerously offbeat and it's got its own OS and browser style interface that you can control with mouse and keyboard if you have them plugged in. You can play this with just the standard controller and touch screen. You can even use motion controls. It works just fine, but real mouse control does improve the experience. This is a port of a game that started out on PC and it's not hard to tell. I am pretty taken with this game, so much so that I have actually gone ahead and bought it, but not the Switch version. Getting it on Steam seemed like a better idea. I'd rather play the Windows version on my desktop. And that might be the problem with keyboard and mouse support on the Switch. There are a few other games that reputedly do support it, but none that I really need the Switch port of. Quake 2, Factorio, and Tactics Ogre Resurrection, all games I might want to try, but probably not on Switch, they're not exclusives. 
Are there any others? Well, sources online only mention the handful of games I've already talked about, and there doesn't seem to be a definitive list anywhere, and you can't search for keyboard and mouse games specifically on the eShop either. I've gone through all the games I own pretty much, and no others seem to have native support. I was hoping Disco Elysium might do, that would have improved this port quite a bit, but no. Dark Souls is a bit better, but that is also a no, and probably a surprise to no one, but Mario Kart doesn't support keyboard and mouse either. Neither does Super Mario Odyssey or Super Mario 3D World or any of the other big Nintendo releases. What about Fortnite? That is a cross-platform release, but that's still very much a no. Apex Legends is the same, and so is Rocket League. No keyboard, no mouse, and it's the same deal for Overwatch 2. Too, as well. So it might seem like the dream is over, this just isn't the platform for hardcore esports gamers. You heard it here first, it's mostly control pad only. But, but, maybe not, maybe there's still hope, maybe I could still go pro, blow up on Twitch with only my Switch, thanks to a device like this. Yes, it's a keyboard and mouse adapter that should work with any game. They've been around for years, no surprise that you can buy one for the Switch. In fact, there's loads of these on the market, and most of the cheaper ones seem to be very similar, and they've all got very lukewarm reviews. Mine is the Dark Walker FO202 for what it's worth, which isn't all that much, it cost me £12 on eBay, and while it's not hard to set up, let's get to it. Let's start off with something that might be an obvious choice for escaping the controller, we can revisit Fortnite, and yes, this isn't my game, really, I'm not even going to attempt building, and I may be a little bit behind the curve here, but finally I do get to talk about Fortnite. And weirdly, somehow, this is okay, it plays quite well. These adapters work by just taking the keyboard and mouse data that they output and converting them to the controller outputs that the console expects. The Switch here thinks it's just talking to a standard Pro Controller, so there's no other hacks or anything else needed. I thought this was going to be terrible, but it's really not. In fact, I actually prefer it. If you're a serious Fortnite player, well, you're probably not watching this video, but you if you are watching this video, you might notice the difference between this and native mouse and keyboard, but it doesn't feel noticeably off to me. The vehicle controls are a bit odd, but even with the controller, they're not quite what I was expecting. The biggest problem with this is that you can't remap anything, but that's just a flaw with this and a lot of the other cheaper adapters that you can buy. The left stick is mapped to WASD, the mouse is the right stick and L and R. The rest of the buttons are mostly keys on the left side of the keyboard. You can reconfigure controls on the Switch, which does help, but it would be way better if you could just remap the whole thing. It's okay for Fortnite as it is, but I would change it a bit if I could, and you can do that with some of the higher-end adapters. The story is pretty much the same with other similar games like Apex Legends. Again, it's fine, probably better than with the standard controller for me. This is even less my game than Fortnite, but it seems to work well. In fact, maybe a bit too well. This is a bit of a controversial practice. Some might even call it cheating because mouse and keyboard give so much of an advantage. A lot of games have a separate matchmaking for PC and console because of this, so to see me play this way might trigger some people. Luckily, I am so totally inept at first-person shooters that even a boost like this is not going to put me ahead of anyone, and that's just as true in Overwatch 2, the other big free-to-play shooter on the Switch right now. It's a long-running debate about cross-platform PC matchmaking and input devices. Quake does allow PC matchups, by the way, but let's not get bogged down in all that. I am really not the man to guide you through this minefield of gamer drama. What about Nintendo first-party games? You know, the exclusives you bought the Switch for? Well, Mario Kart 8 is absolutely the biggest of them all, and well... It's not totally unplayable this way, but it doesn't really add anything. 
the mouse analog input does nothing in the standard configuration, but even if you can remap, there doesn't seem to be much point to this. Same with Mario Odyssey, you can play it, but mouse and keyboard doesn't really add anything. Something you could say for any game, I would think, where Mario is the main character, they're not made for this control method. You don't really need precise aiming or a ton of hotkeys. Unless you have a special need for a keyboard and mouse setup, I don't think this will be much use in these games for the average gamer. But there is one Nintendo exclusive I am very curious to try, one that might be improved by this, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. How does Link feel after grafting on these very un-console-like controls? Well, better than Mario, definitely. It sort of works, it's an interesting change. Once again, I'm stuck with the problem of not being able to quite remap my inputs how I would like, curse my cheap adapter, but in general, keyboard and mouse, it kind of works. Even after a hundred hours of Tears of the Kingdom, I still find myself tripping over the controls a little bit. I mean, it's not a huge issue, but for some reason it's just never felt as natural as it has on other games that I've sunk a lot of time into. An alternative is tempting, but this one doesn't really solve the problem. Manipulating objects with Ultra Hand is a little bit awkward, and it would be great if you had a pointer interface that let you move things around like it's a CAD program or something, but this adapter just isn't going to be able to do that. It just maps the left stick to the mouse. It can't remake the whole interface. And on top of that, many other things just don't work as well. I really thought aiming bows would be better, but the mouse translates to controls that seem quite jumpy. I'm going to be sticking with a controller going forward. It feels better, it's more convenient, but if you had maybe a better quality adapter with full remapping and tweaking, I wouldn't think you were mad for preferring it this way. And if this is the one thing holding you back from playing Tears of the Kingdom or Breath of the Wild or any Switch titles, an adapter might work for you. That might sound unlikely, but for people with some kind of mobility impairment, that could easily be true. A device like this might be incredibly useful if it makes games more accessible. And this has made me realise that Nintendo doesn't really give you a whole lot of control options for most games. You can remap controller functions, but, well, that still has limitations. It would be great if Nintendo actually did have native mouse support for building in Tears of the Kingdom. There's no technical reason they can't. Yes, running Switch games on an emulator will give you a few more options, or using custom firmware and homebrew mods on the real hardware, but that will definitely creep out of the scope for this video. I did check, I can't find any unofficial Tears of the Kingdom mods that do add proper mouse control. Maybe somebody will come up with one in the future. So yes, we're left with the very unsurprising conclusion that if you really want to play games with keyboard and mouse, well, the Switch isn't absolutely the best platform, but you can if you need to. So let's call halt on this one here. Thank you to my Patreons whose generous contributions do help me buy stuff like Switch keyboard adapters. That's not really selling it, is it? If you would like to join them, there is a link below. That would be amazing. And I will say thank you for watching. Goodbye, sayonara, and see you later, alligator.